Hello. Um, thank you so much for having me here. It's uh, really amazing. Uh, it's my first time in the USA also, and my first time talking alone. I will normally have um, this guy to my side. <laughs> uh, he's my husband and also co-founder of Kill Monday Games. So when it came to this side, what I wanted to talk about here, I just really wanted to go very personal since the entire journey making games have, is very self-taught. And uh, I just wanted to t uh, talk about feelings and about the importance of them in our everyday lives and even, of course, when we create something as video games. So emotions are the big part of what drives us in life, but we talk about them very little and we kind of, you know, go around them for the mostly. But I've been taking this personally. I've been self uh, having a lot of traumatic events in my life and I really needed to find a way to kind of approach them and feel better about my life and all of that. So I want, um, I want to ask first, is anybody here that play Frambo? Oh, okay. <laughs> That's cool. Um, and, um, well, in Frambo, uh, I animated everything, I painted everything, um, I wrote the story, and um, what else? <laughs> I made um, sound design with my husband, and he took care of the programming part and also the music. So. Here it goes, um, so you can understand a little bit what I mean with the feelings and all that. <laughs> myself. Uh, i never seen it in a, such a big screen before. <laughs> so it's a bit overwhelming. Uh, so, and the, the game that I'm working right now, it's Little Misfortune. Um, for this one, I've also been doing the art, kind of the same things we did with Rambo, my husband and I. But this time we had a, a little bit of money so we could uh, afford uh, a little bit of help also. So, here it goes. Welcome to my game. The rules of this game are simple. There is no right or wrong, only consequences. Okay, okay, only consequences. When you beat the game, the prize of eternal happiness is yours. I'm ready. Mr. Voice? Yes, Miss Fortune? Has anyone reached the end of the game? Gotten the eternal happiness? Yes, of course. You know, I want to win this prize for my mommy. Oh, that's really sweet of you. I'm going out to play, mommy! <gasps> I saw a monster! What monster? I didn't see anything. It's probably just your imagination. you may realize I love character design and I love writing stories. Um, when I began uh, to make uh, games, I already knew in the beginning that I wanted to connect with the gamers in a very personal level. I just wanted to build some kind of platform where you can go through a story and just feel a lot of things. 
Um, for me, uh, it has been a little bit of, of therapy going through this game. Um, Frambo is about this girl that uh, finds her parents uh, murder in their uh, bedroom. And of course, that traumatic event opened a new world in her mind. And that's how I see a, a little bit of our feelings. We just don't talk about them, or, and we build up ideas in our head, drive by these emotions. And uh, many times, if we don't talk about them, we will build these terrible worlds inside of us. And that's kind of what I wanted to portray in this game. Emotions, when managed poorly, can drive us to do stupid things. So here comes the dark part of the story. When I was about 15 years old, I was sexually abused with a gun pointing to my head. Sorry, <laughs> get really emotional about that. So, <laughs> just give me a little time. <laughs> it's, it's the first time I, I, I speak about this. I, I've been writing about this, but it's really, really intense. Um, when you go through life feeling certain things, you really want to find something to feel better, to kind of not be in, in that bad situation, you know? So, after I w it happened this to me, I was feeling nothing. I was numb, and I blame myself for that, because normally we will expect that people will st start screaming or, you know, crying, and I didn't do any of those things. Now I understand that we have this flight and fight uh, way of reacting, and that back then I didn't knew that. And later on, I started cutting myself. And seeing the blood running through my body, my own, my own cuts did that, of course left me with something even more difficult to, to grasp and uh, go through life with that. So this game, of course, <laughs> as you see, has a lot of blood everywhere, and many people have asked me, but why so much blood? Why do you use that? And that's kind of the connection that it has. Um, it's really deep and it's really personal. So, yeah, it feels like for me, Frambo was an incredible way of going through something that was very painful to me. And uh, somehow it connected with the gamers in a way that I never even expected. We got tons of emails saying that people were crying at the end of the game. They were uh, feeling so many things, and many of them were even in mental houses were, where they could go through this and feel somehow that somebody else could understand them. So for me, it was a very, very great experience to start making video games. Whew. So enough of the sad things. <laughs> Um, so, when we started to make games, we didn't know nothing about games. So, I was a bit nervous about coming here and talking to you about how to do games. You probably know so much more than I do. But um, we started um, creating the, the games just with the things that we had. We did short films before, so we kn knew a little bit about storytelling. So, that's the path that we took for the most. Um, I also uh, worked a lot uh, with animation, and I was about to get unemployed from my work, and I wanted to keep doing animation, of course. Then I came across game companies that were searching for animators, and I thought it was a great opportunity. But then I started to read more upon this indie game development, and that really intrigued us we realized that we could do our games by ourselves. And my husband, he has been like a gamer since he was very young. I, I started to play games a little bit later because of the economical thing. I didn't have a computer or such a things. And then, so we started to can, kind of get really excited about finding a new way to tell stories. Um, yeah. <laughs> When, uh, when it comes to, 
to video games, we learned that there's going to be a ton of technical stuff that we didn't see it coming. Um, for Frambo, we chose to work with Game Maker. I'm not sure if you're aware of that program, yes? Um, and we saw a possibility there that maybe it wasn't be so difficult to get into the coding part, and also it was a little bit different to export it to kind of PC and the mobile uh, versions of the game. So we had that in mind. We wanted to make the game available in mobile. And back then, I remember that Game Maker had this limitation of 50 megabytes to do the entire game to put it up in the Google Store. And it was very little. So we we drew. I drew everything very tiny. I didn't know that be, you could, you know, scale scale it down afterwards. <laughs> yeah. So everything is really pixelated and yeah. And uh, also I try to do like the most of the animations with very few frames and all that. But more we did the game, we were so much above those 50 megabytes. It was like, all right, this is not gonna work anymore for the mobile version. But we kept doing this anyway. We thought, okay, Maybe we just release it for the PC, and we didn't want to, the story to feel like, because it was so personal to me, I didn't want it to restrict it that much to the technical part. Luckily, after we were done with the game, we kind of contacted with the game maker, and they, shortly after our request, they, they added some expansion pack, so it was a little bit easier for us to work with that. So that's why. We can fix them later, those technical issues. Uh, for a little misfortune, uh, we jumped into three, um, Unity 3D because we thought it was going to be easier, but it wasn't. <laughs> um, we, we work with a, with a program, a plugin called Adventure Creator. Are you aware of that? Yes. Um, An Adventure Creator gives you a lot of tools. and. Um, it feels really nice at the beginning, but more we got into the story and all the mechanics that we wanted to have, we, we realized that it was very, it was limiting also. So we had, we got to mix a, a little bit of our own coding and the plugin, and that has given us so much uh, problems actually. But we're not yet done with the little misfortune, so we'll see what happens. <laughs> So, storytelling and character design. I'm not sure what can I bring new to the table with storytelling, but what I realized with, with the games that I've done is that the storytelling style is kind of the most important thing, at least for the games that I've done. I really enjoy the, in Frambo, you can go into two separate worlds, and Frambo will get these pills from the doctors, and when every time you, you choose to take these pills, you will see another world in front of you. Um, and that, for me, was really interesting in games. You, you can do that so... It's like you, you go through the, the, the thing yourself, you know? Um, so it felt really cool to do that kind of duality in the game. And for a little misfortune, we, we kind of tried to... A break the four, the four wall. Uh, the voice that you hear in the in the in the trailer, it's a voice that always talks to the gamer, and also communicates with the main character. So it feels like you are part of the game. You know things that the main character doesn't know because this voice has tell, told you about this stuff. Uh, when it comes to character design. I get a bit annoyed when people ask me if about just their design and you know the clothing they're wearing. But characters are about the psyche and the personality, and many times that it's forgotten, especially in games. And um, I will just uh, also say that when uh, you are writing something, what I found really really helpful is to write stuff you're interested in because it's only then I really find that you will go deeper into the subject. Um, I want to show you a little video I made about uh, Miss Fortune's character uh, and this is uh, how this voice see her. 
so here it goes. This is Miss Fortune. She has a funny face, a happy smile, and a pumpkin shaped head. Huh. I can hear you, you know. Oh, you can? Mm hmm. Little Miss Fortune is eight, funny, and charming. Oh no, I step on Doogie Doo. Hiding under that velvet pink beret, the dark world of fantasy. Wherever she goes, bad luck unravels, revealing itself with thunder and troubles. But nonetheless, with her sparkling sparkle, she will shine through any obstacle. Yay! Happiness to the soup! <laughs> So that uh, kind of explains what I mean, that uh, I really like to write like a psyche behind the characters and a very strong personality. I've been acting also since I was very little, and uh, acting helped me to realize um, how many of the directors I work with uh, didn't really put emphasis into how important a character was uh, when it came to the psyche and their personality. Um, so, what I found really, really exciting to do when writing dialogue, sometimes it's just a little bit of mind games. You, I just sometimes start talking with these characters and ask them to tell me what they like, what they dislike, what they will do in this situation. And I find it very, like, um, it's, it's, it's a bit of playing a game myself while writing the story. So, that feels like it, it brings a lot of detail that maybe we wouldn't think about if we just think about writing something. So, also, while writing the stories, for example, for Frambo, I've been connecting so deeply with them that I will just be crying or laughing a lot just in front of the computer. And to reach, when you reach that, it's kind of magical. You, you, you understand that what you're doing with the, with the characters is very, it's very intimate somehow. Uh, there's a quote at the end of Frambo that really kind of made me feel some kind of closure for my own issues and also, of course, the story that she was going through. Um, I still don't know many things, but the one thing I know is that between guilt and fear, I choose happiness. This uh, quote I send around to my friends and I ask them, what do you think about it? Do you understand what I mean? And many of them were like, but uh, you have two choices. Why are you putting the third one just like that? <laughs> and it was like, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then I, I realized, I felt a, a little bit insecure, but then I realized that it's, it was just that what I wanted to come across in the story, that sometimes you are in front of some situations in life but you have to be sometimes creative and kind of find your own kind of way, your own path. And that's kind of the happiness part in Frambo. And um, for Little Misfortune, she, she normally says that she's a little lady. And I found that very, very cute. But it's not me that came up with that. Uh, actually, Isaac was sitting in the train once, and he heard a little girl talking to her mother, and she said, Mommy, I have something in my little foot. And that was just so precious, you know, to understand <laughs> that a, a little person sees himself like a little person that has little shoes, you know? <laughs> it's like, it's too, too cute, and I really wanted to put that into the character. And it's kind of stuck with her, and she uses a lot throughout the game. Uh, as uh, I'm a millennial, I spend a lot of time in social media, so I wanted to ask one of um, my friends there um, if they had a question for me, and I just chose this one. Um, why is that always a little girl who is cute but sad? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, as you might guess, it's a lot connected to what I've been experiencing myself. But I also see very important to kind of um, give children a new way of kind of seeing them. They're not, 
you know, they're very clever and they can be sometimes very surprising. When I write as a, as a child, I feel like I can be vulnerable in a way that maybe being a, a, a grown up, I couldn't really feel. And somehow it feels very free and very beautiful. Um, I find that um, sometimes we just treat children like if they don't understand anything. I actually remember once when I was a little girl, it was, uh, I, I come from Chile, actually, for the first, uh, yeah, anyway. Uh, and um, there, they taught me about sexuality in a way that I find very damaging. They, they were showing me pictures of Adam, Adam and Eve with leaves covering their genitalia. And sadly, I have seen, you know, parts before, and I was very confused by that. I was feeling like, where is my leave? I, I, I lost it somewhere, I don't know. So it was kind of, you know, confusing. And I don't know, it's, I feel like we are in, in, a, in a moment in our, in our story that we need to kind of realize that we are not just the grown-ups and the children. We are giving the children every, every material to learn how to speak, how to act, and all that. So I find it very beautiful to kind of give them a little bit of attention in that way. So, I'm getting a bit thirsty. <laughs> um, so, the importance of self-growth while working in a very long production. Uh, when we started to make Frambo, we thought that game would take us six months to do. It took three years. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're all very familiar with that. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, it, it, kind of, it kind of helped me to have this very personal thing going on in the game because there were moments that I really just wanted to give up everything. It was really hard, everything was so new, and I just felt like having this connection will help. Isaac and I worked uh, after Frambo in a game called Different Galaxy for a whole year. Oh, thank you very much. This is awesome. It's magical. <laughs> oh, thank you. So we worked in this game for a year, and, um, and we really want to do it. We are so excited about the entire lore in it. Um, but we need a lot of money. Uh, I, I've been doing some budgeting and we need a, a, around 10 million dollars and it's like, what? Okay, too much. So we want to wait and maybe see if, uh, who knows, maybe you have that money around, I don't know. <laughs> uh, so, you know. But for this game, we, as we had this um, thing that we wanted to do something personal all the time, even though uh, maybe for this game, it was mainly about the, the, the lack of a father figure that both my husband and I have. I was, um, my father left me when I was not even born, and um, Isaac's father actually killed himself. So it has been really, really difficult for us to, you know, live our normal lives. We have daddy issues a lot. So... So, uh, for Little Misfortune, we also have this personal thing, uh, a little bit of the father figure issues also, but we wanted to, like I said earlier, to have this social insight uh, to show that children aren't as um, clueless as we might think and all that. So, uh, and I also love just this uh, to show, <laughs> like, relationships that uh, there are around in our family and all that kind of stuff. Um, this is um, a picture of a short film I made in 2009 called Say Goodbye Isabel. And this project also was um, connected, well, this is not a game, but I wanted to talk about it anyway, uh, because it taught me something very special. But this, uh, this short film was made based on when I moved to Sweden and I couldn't speak Swedish, and I'm an artist, and I want to express myself, and I couldn't. So I felt really paralyzed. And this story is about just a paralyzed girl that is forgotten to die in her bed. It's really dramatic. And um, when we were at uh, 
and cultural exchange in Poland, and we showed this short film. After it was over, a girl came to me from the audience and said that she was crying. I made people cry a lot, it seems like, <laughs> yeah. But the thing was that she was really proud over this feeling she got there. She was feeling somehow so happy to be that empathetic towards the, the characters that she was um, seeing the story go through and all that. So that taught me that I shouldn't be afraid of telling a little bit of sadder stories maybe, and it's okay, you know? Um, so yes, when uh, we are writing something, I mean, I kind of understood after Frambo that, um, or while we were creating Frambo, that it was really interesting to go deeper into certain points in the game development or the game um, assets to come across the story in a better way. Um, for example, for Frambo, we, because it was our first game, we wanted to be kind of clever in the way we used the puzzles and kind of incorporate it to the story the best way we could. Um, and that was something we really put our time into. Uh, and also with the diff uh, Little Misfortune, um, I went a lot more deeper into the character creation itself because I really just wanted to give me that, that luxury. Because I'm like self-taught in the game development, every game has like their own you know, goal to achieve somehow. But uh, it was really interesting to see how m deeper you went into and put your attention in just certain points that you wanted to get better at. Um, I understood that my, my, my characters were getting more believable and sometimes I just, you know, I, I feel like Miss Fortune is a real little girl. She, she has like a very, very uh, complete uh, or complex personality. So I really recommend to go into those points that maybe you don't feel like you're the strongest when you're writing a story. Uh, Yes, and uh, we all have heard about the writer's block when we don't feel very inspired, but I don't think that's real. Um, I think that sometimes we're just too busy to hear other people talk or other people, other people's stories. So sometimes when I don't feel very inspired, I will just go out, sit at a cafe, and simply listen to people talk, like, a little misco there, just looking at them and just listening. And I actually wrote a little th uh, something that I came across when I was um, kind of preparing this talk. It was a man. I don't need to promise you, you have to hear it from the bottom of your heart. Time come for us. There is no other choice. I've been accused. Everything coming around me is just going around, you know? I can't force it. So when you hear something like that, you want to connect the dots. You have to, you, you want to kind of, you ask yourself, is he a criminal? Is he not in love anymore? There's so many ways you can kind of uh, come up with a story. So I really recommend that to go around and just listen. So the string of failure. I fail a lot of times and I, I remember this particular story when I was at the animation school and I kind of have an epiphany there. Um, I was really um, secure, uh, sure of myself in animation because I've done like stop motions before and I thought I could animate. But it wasn't true. <laughs> when we got our first um, um, assignment, we needed to do this, uh, a ball bounce, and I was like, oh, that's easy. And we needed to use the principles of animation. And when uh, I did my, my assignment, I was like, Mimi, I want to show my ball first. Please show. And then we had also like, not this big screen, but it was a little bigger. Uh, and everybody could see the ball bouncing. <laughs> 
uh, and I got it all wrong. The timing was wrong, the, the principles, everything was so off, and just the teacher was pointing out all that I did so wrong, and I was a little bit ashamed. But just that they also understood that, all right, I'm just in school, I need to do this, and I went all in. I went to the other extreme, where I just used the two years I had of animation school to kind of do so much animation I could. I, I would stay sometimes from 8 in the morning to 10 in the evening just animating. One day, I remember, I did 200 pages of animations on white paper, and it was like I was on the flow, I was enjoying this so much. So just directing my emotion towards something that in the beginning I was a bit unsure, then I used that to kind of go all in and do the best. And I became a very good animator. So I got a job right away in the first year of school. So I was working aside and also animating. Um, at the end of the, the school, uh, we had to do one assignment, one uh, short film, but I was so f fast and good at animating <laughs> that I did two, two short films instead. <laughs> if you want, you can check them out later on YouTube. They're somewhere there. Um, so animation, also a very good tool to express emotion. Um, I. We got a lot of uh, fans telling us that many of the animations in Frambo were so spot on that her emotions came across very clear for them. So there you can see some of the, these are some of the poses. I, I really had so little to work with that I kind of needed to think about this really, really, but, yeah. And anyway, so I did some kind of like, it was around 30 or something different animations that had really, really few frames. But for each um, uh, dialogue, line of dialogue, I will mix them. So even though it was not just moving the mouth, uh, I would use these poses as, um, to, to tell a better way the line that I wanted to, you know, it's like if she was angry at this line, Maybe it's, free, it's difficult, you know, to understand that she's angry if just I move the mouth. So I really did these poses, and you know, I was playing around with that, and I think it helped a lot. Um, so, so that's about the the um, animation part. I always, I also wanted to talk about the when we kind of um, work with other people. Um, sometimes the environment can get really, really up and down. Um, a long time ago, I was working also on theater plays, and I was directing them, and how I treated people just damaged a lot the, the process and the work at the end. Everybody was stressed, and I couldn't manage my, my emotions, so I would act also very stressed, and... Um, but with time, I just learned that communication improved a lot when you also kind of improve your emotional intelligence. So when, when we got the, to hire some people, um, we are now seven people in Kilmondi Games, uh, I was really afraid of being that person again, of not being able to manage these feelings. But I've been working really hard to just keep the cool, understand people, understand their emotions, that they also have dreams, that they also have ideas, that they also can bring something to the table. It was, it was really nice to see the change of the earlier years when I was a mess, and now that I was more concentrated into work towards a goal instead of just going forward like a crazy person. So right now we've just been kind of uh, taking decisions in the company, like what's the best for everybody? What's, who can bring something new? Or like that really open communication. And that way I've gotten also a better response. Before 
Everybody hated me because I was the one shouting at them and telling them what to do. Now it feels like I'm more of a leader for them and um, I work more, most close, close to the art part of the development. So both of my, my girls, they're, they're very thankful now how I treat them and how I've been kind of a mentor for them instead of just the shouty boss. <laughs> yes. Um, so, simple ways of how to improve the emotional intelligence and to incorporate them in your stories and your, in your workplace. Just acknowledge your emotions. Don't, don't try to just, you know, I don't feel this and just go away. It's really nice to know where you are at. Then analyze them. Realize where they come from. Sometimes they're just ideas you get, you know. And many times it's just misunderstanding also from the bad communication. Then accept the emotions. They're not going to go away. We just have them in there. So we need to work with them. Reflect on emotions and handle your emotions. And of course, handle the emotions of others. We all need to understand that, yeah, we feel all the time. So my last thing, cultivate the skill of uh, emotional intelligence and become the one you want to be. Thank you very much. Um, I'm not sure if we have time for questions, I think. Is there any question you want to... Yes? Yeah, um, actually, it was my husband who gave me that job. <laughs> uh, when we were um, trying to come up with the, the feeling for the, the character, I kind of start playing around with my voice and all that. So at the end, he said, but I really just want you to make it. It's perfect. So it was just like that. And I was like, but I don't want to act. My English is not the best. And I was so filled with insecurities, but I love to act, so I really wanted to die. So thank you very much. <laughs> uh, is there anybody else who would like to ask something? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> we have been close to separate twice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but things worked out at the end anyway. Uh, it's really difficult because, you know, when you're working so, so much time in something, then the stress levels just go up and down and you kind of start blaming on each other instead of seeing the reasons. And that's why the emotional intelligence ha have helped me so much, you know. Um, we, we kind of have this ritual we do. Every day after work, we will sit and just talk about the day. And that's the, the, the best way we have found to just cope with everything. Because sometimes we could say stupid things to each other and we don't mean them, but we hurt each other. So that's just talking, just being honest and open to the relationship and the work. And understand that sometimes there's time for work and sometimes there's time for being a couple. <laughs> yes. Yes, is anybody else? No? Yeah? I don't miss anything. I don't have my glasses, no? Okay. So, thank you very much for having me here. It was very nice. <laughs>